punishment per se. Why? How can I say that? Because God loves everybody. He always has and wants all people to do what? Repent, Repent and come to him, whether they were Jew or Egyptian. The same thing is true in the New Testament. We have to read the scriptures in this light. We understand that God is and has always been a God of love. He has always wanted to have his people whom he has created out of love to love him back. The whole call of Abraham was that he would say, I'll make you a great name, I'll make you a great nation, and a great blessing to everybody through you. Okay? It was always a universal call. Always. It never was a time when it wasn't. It's just that Israel did not do its job. They couldn't do their job. They couldn't keep the law. They couldn't do it. The law was just and right and holy, but we are not. We cannot keep the law. And so they were a bad example for the, for the nations. And so God had to send them into exile to teach them the lesson of come back, repent. He sent them prophets. And what was the message of the prophets? Repent, repent, repent. Stop your idol worship and come back to the true living God. So you can live up to your vocation and be the people that's the light to the nations, not more darkness. And so after all of that, at the last days, God sent his very son to show not only Israel, but all of us, how much he loves us. To do what? To call all people to himself. He died for just the Jews? No, for whom? For everyone. For everyone. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Because God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved, redeemed, sanctified, transformed into children of God, to restore that which was lost by sin, by Adam and Eve. So I really want to accent that because I think it's too easy and we hear this too much from our evangelical brothers and sisters. All this wrath and all this vengeance and oh, you know, and it's like that, that's, not, that's not God. That's not. If it comes to this kind of dramatic wonder show, it's so that people will repent. Whatever it takes to get your attention, God will do it. He prefers the righteousness, the goodness of God to cause us to come back to repentance. But if he needs to whack us on the behind, he'll do that too. And God knows best on how to deal with each of us. Some of us need a whack on the behind. Some of us need more love. We just simply don't know the love of God. We just don't know the love of God. And he melts our hearts, our hard hearts, when he shows us that kind of love. But God knows how to deal with us. Some of us are just hard-headed, you know, like me. I get the whack on the head, get straight, you know. And, and uh, I think more often than not, that's what I think I'm getting. And the truth is, God melts my heart with his love. And I'm always, I'm always amazed when, when I, I receive that love and that mercy. And I will tell you this, do you know where I experience that the most? Do you know where I experience that heart-melting kind of mercy? The Holy Eucharist. Wrong. 
confession. Mm. There have been more times than you want to know where I've gone into the confession, I'd expect Father to say, what's wrong with you? Snap out of it. Stop doing that. What's wrong with you? Something like that. I feel that's what I need. You know what I get? I, it's amazed me. And I've gone to different priests thinking that, well, maybe it's, that's a nice priest I got, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, different, different places. And I, I get something like that and I'm like, and I sometimes leave crying because it's just, you know, that's not what I expected. I, you know, like I said, I expect the whack on the head because I think that's what I, and it's like, no, no, that's not, that's not it. God, that's not what God's into. You know what I'm saying? So I just want to sit here and testify that God's love and his mercy, I experienced the greatest in confession. Not 100% and I don't, but I'm telling you more often than not, that's where it's experienced for me. And so I just encourage you all, come back. God loves you. That's I think more and more we need, we need to hear this kind of burning love he has for us. I don't think we, we know the love of God. I really don't. I really don't. I don't. I'm always, why am I always amazed when I get that? You know why? I don't, I don't know the love of God. I don't. I need to be shown it more and more and more and more. I need that grace. I need it. Because otherwise, I would just be a hard-hearted sinner. Doing my own thing. It's only the grace and that love of God that I don't deserve. But because he loves me, he gives it. And to you, and you, and you, all of you, you just need to come and receive. It's there. It's there. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's keep going. So with it, the wrath of God is ended. Verse 2. And I saw what appeared to be a sea of glass mingled with fire. And those who had conquered the beast and his image and the number of its name, standing beside the sea of glass with harps of God in their hands, and they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and wonderful are your deeds, O Lord God the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the ages. Who shall not fear and glorify thy name, O Lord? For you alone are holy. All the nations shall come and worship you, for your judgments have been revealed. Outside of the book of Psalms, the book of Revelation has the most songs written. I've said this in the beginning of our study. I need to repeat it again. Throughout the book of Revelation, whenever you see the souls in heaven, they're singing, singing. Sometimes they say, but they mostly sing. You know why? There's a lot to sing about. There's a lot to sing about. You know? Just, yes. No, these are those who conquered the beast in the image of its name. So it's more than just the 144,000. It's more than that. It's all of those who conquered the beast in the image of his name. Because the 144,000 was mentioned in chapter 14, this is another set. It's a greater set. If it had been the 144, they would have said so. He would have repeated it. Anyone who has conquered the beast and the number of his name. Much like chapter 7, remember? The first part of chapter 7 was the sealing of the 144,000. 
But the second half of chapter 7 was what? A great multitude from where? All the nations, languages, and people that were redeemed. It's both Jews and non-Jews. I would say that these are the non-Jews, the everyone else, other than the 144,000. Because that fits the motif that we've seen in the book of Revelation. It's Jews and non-Jews. All one part of the redeemed. Okay. Uh, verse 5. After this I looked, and the temple of the tent of witness in heaven was opened, and out of the temple came the seven angels with the seven plagues, robed in pure bright linen and with golden sashes across their chests. And one of the four living creatures gave the seven angels seven golden bowls full of the wrath of God who lives forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no one could enter the temple until the seven plagues of the seven angels were ended. Okay, so chapter 15 is very short, as you can see. Mm -hmm. It's only eight verses long. Mm -hmm. And what is it? It's the intro to the seven last judgments. It's all this singing and worship again in heaven. Honoring and praising God of the nations, not just the Jews, of the nations. The word that's translated in my Bible as, O King of the Ages, if you have my Bible, you can jump down to the footnotes and it says, of the nations. The word here in Greek is ethnos, where we get the word ethnic from. It means people groups, identified people groups, ethnos. Okay? So let me just tease out some of the parts of this. Chapter 15, verse 1 is the sign it says, the sign of the last judgment, verses 2 through 4, it talks about those who are victorious over the beast. And verses 5 through 8 is the temple of God being opened. Now, those who are victorious over the beast sing the song of Moses. Did you see, hear that? Now, where do we get that? The Song of Moses is a specific reference. It's Exodus chapter 15. If you go back to Exodus chapter 15, this is the Song of Moses. This is the Song of Victory after the defeat of the Egyptians at the Red Sea. Page 50, if you have my Bible. Exodus 15. Now, I'm not going to read this entire song. It would do you well to go back on your own to read the whole victory. But I want to focus on a few verses. Verses 10 through 13. Just 10 through 13 of this song to give you just a little taste of what this song of victory is all about. Verse 10. You blew with your you blew with your wind. The sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you, O Lord? among the gods. You see that? Moses is praising the Lord above the other gods. What gods? Specifically the ones in Egypt. 
because he was very well aware of the gods of Egypt. Remember, he lived in the house of Pharaoh for 40 years as a prince. So I'm sure he, he took part in the worship of those gods while he was being raised by his Egyptian stepmother. Okay? Point is, so did the people of Israel. They were so enculturated into Egypt, they too were worshiping the Egyptians' gods. And so here's Moses before all the people and saying, Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, terrible in glorious deeds, doing wonders? You stretched out your right hand and the earth swallowed him up. You have led your merciful love. You have led in your merciful love the people with whom you have redeemed. Did you hear that? You have led in your merciful love the people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them by your strength to your holy abode. Did you hear that? That's just a small part. Like I said, you would do well to read this entire song. And it's interesting that it mentions this in the book of Revelation. Because we're about to read about all of these terrible plagues again. And what are the plagues? Water to blood, sores, hail, darkness. What does that sound like to you? Egypt. Egypt. So it's no coincidence at this point that we hear the song of Moses. And what is this saying? The purpose of it is, hear up my people, come out of Egypt. What's Egypt? The world, the system of the world, the reign of the Antichrist, the false earthly worldly system that is in competition to the kingdom of God. Come out of her. We're going to hear that definitely when we get to chapter 17. Come out of Babylon. Here we're hearing the song of Moses extolling the glories of God who redeemed his people out of 